So remember, in life, it's very important not to burn bridges. It's very important to keep relationships. It's very important to be respectful to someone, especially if someone's in a position at some point in time to help you in a certain way. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. I always say that and uh, everything is good on this end. Praise God for that. And uh, first off, I want to thank everybody, all of you that are subscribing, that enjoy the content. We appreciate it very much. Share it with those that, you know, you think might enjoy it also. We appreciate that very much. And uh, always remember this, we're always trying to encourage you and provide you with content that we think can be a benefit to you. So click on the link below. There's a guide that you can get on leadership, negotiation a lot of things. Check out the inner circle. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's growing in leaps and bounds, I'm telling you, and people are getting a lot out of it. So that's what we're all about here. We want to help you, encourage you, you know, give you expertise in business, leadership, and give you the benefit of all my experience, you know, both in that life and out of the life. So take advantage of it. A lot of it is free, so get in there and enjoy it. You know, one of the things that uh, I keep getting comments on is about certain scenes in movies that people want me to talk about. You know, Michael, what did this mean? This scene mean to you? What did that mean to you? Is there a lesson in it? And, you know, I thought about this, and uh, something very unique is happening in the church that I go to. Every February, they have kind of a movie month where they take secular movies, and then the pastor will go out and give a message about certain scenes or certain parts of that movie. And it's the most popular uh, time in the church. People love it. It's really great. And I get a lot out of it. So, you know, we decided, you know, maybe to do the same thing in certain scenes. And again, it was based upon the feedback and the comments that we get from all of you. And, you know, so we're going to do that. And uh, I'm picking a scene today that's probably one of the most iconic in all of movies. And obviously it comes out of The Godfather. I shouldn't say obviously, but it does come out of The Godfather. One of the most brilliant movies of all time. People, so a lot of people say it was the most brilliant, greatest American movie that was ever produced, Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. I happen to agree with that. You know, it's just a brilliant movie. And the opening scene is just iconic. And there are some things to be learned out of that scene. First of all, let me set it up for you. Let me tell you how guys reacted to this on the street. It was just unbelievable. Marlon Brando, I think every mob guy on the street would want to be Marlon Brando, the way he acted. Vito Corleone. He kind of set the standard for Cosa Nostra and Mafia guys. And I'm telling you this, I've said it before, in the 70s, when that movie came out, guys started to carry themselves differently, started to dress differently, started to talk differently. They would mimic things from, you know, The Godfather. It had that much of an impact on guys on the street. And I think in a good way, in many ways, because, you know, Vito Corleone, his character was patterned after a few guys. I already mentioned this in a prior video. Carlo Gambino, for sure. I think Joe Perfacci, because he was in the olive oil business. He was a composite of a few guys, maybe Frank Costello, because of his political connections. You know, a composite character, but the way he carried himself was just unbelievable. And everybody kind of looked up to the Vito Corleone character. And uh, this opening scene, again, was iconic. You know, I'll set it up. I'm sure many of you have seen The Godfather. You know, it was amazing one time. I asked my daughters about it. They hadn't seen The Godfather. I said, you got to be kidding. You got to watch the movie. And of course, they watched it and loved it. But I think just about everybody watching this video has seen The Godfather. But iconic scene, opening, amazing. Vito Corleone is sitting in his office. It's in his house. And it's the day of his daughter's wedding. And there was a, a tradition, a Sicilian tradition that anybody that comes to the father of the bride on that occasion and asks for a favor, the dad has to honor that favor or give him that gift. Now, I never heard of that before the Godfather. I asked about it, and some people say, yeah, that was a tradition. It wasn't a tradition here in the United States, but maybe that was something that happened in Sicily. I had never heard of it before that, but hey, you know, why not? So there was a guy that comes in, 
and uh, his name was Bonazera, and we see him asking the Godfather or telling the Godfather what happened to his daughter. And apparently his daughter was out on a date with somebody, and what happened was they beat her up, they tried to rape her, or they did rape her. It was a bunch of guys, not only one. And Bonacera obviously was very upset about it, and he tells Vito Corleone, the Godfather, this is what happened, and these people got arrested. We went to court, and they got convicted, but what happened? They got suspended sentences, and he was shocked. He was appalled. He says, me and my wife were sitting in the courtroom in disbelief because these animals, they brutalized my daughter. They beat her up. She was so beautiful. She'll never be beautiful like that again, and they got suspended sentences, and he couldn't believe it. So now he comes to the Godfather on the day of his daughter's wedding and he asks for a favor. So he gets up and he asks the Godfather, he, he whispers in his ear because he, he doesn't want anybody to hear. Sonny Corleone was there and uh, Robert Duvall, the concierge, was there. So he whispers in his ear. And uh, that's when we first really see Vito Corleone. And what he asks him to do, he asks him to kill the guys that brutalized his daughter. And the reaction from Vito Corleone was classic. And he says, Bonazzetto, you come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding, and you ask me to commit a murder. And Bonacera says, well, this is justice. And Vito Corleone said, that's not justice. Your daughter is still alive. You're asking me to commit a murder on the day of my daughter's wedding. And he's upset about the way Bonacera has talked to him. And he says to him, listen, you haven't called me up. You haven't asked me for the dinner. You never come to me. You show me a lot of disrespect. You don't want anything. But on the day of my daughter's wedding, you come to me for what you say is justice. You want me to kill the people that brutalized your daughter. You know? And then Bonacera leans over at one point and he says, how much shall I pay you? Vito Corleone is very upset with that. He says, Bonacera, Bonacera, what have I ever done to you to treat me so disrespectfully? It wasn't money. This is not what he wanted. What he wanted was for him, Bonacera, to treat him with respect. You know, we're friends. Invite me over for dinner. Come and see my wife. I'm the godfather and you don't even give me any respect. And he was upset about it, and rightfully so. So, you know, he looks at him, he said, if you had shown me respect today, the scum that hurt your daughter, they'd be suffering this day. And he tells him just like that. And, you know, Bonacera gives in. He calls him godfather. And Vito Corleone, you know, he doesn't resist. It is Sicilian tradition. So he says, I'm going to take care of it. Don't worry about it, basically. And, uh, you know, he tells Consiglieri, he says, look, give this to Clemenza to handle. He says, I want to make sure, give it to guys that can control themselves. He didn't want these guys to get killed, but he wanted to rough them up and, and do the favor for Bonacera. And it was an amazing scene. It kind of set up the entire movie. It was brilliant. And I got to tell you, the way Marlon Brando acted in this scene was just unbelievable. And like I said, he set the standard uh, by which all mob guys really wanted to present themselves at that point in time. It was an unbelievable uh, performance by him throughout. It was just great. And The Godfather went on to be an amazing movie, win all those Academy Awards, iconic, goes down, goes down in history. Godfather 2, the same thing. They lost it in Godfather 3, but, you know, just a brilliant movie. You know, so what are the takeaways from that movie? This is what we really got to talk about. What were the takeaways, I should say, from that particular scene? Well, you know, for me, I looked at it and I said, well, you know what? You don't burn bridges. If you know somebody's in power and somebody can benefit you at some point, and he's your friend and you have his ear and you have a friendship with him, why burn bridges? Godfather wasn't asking for anything in return, although let me, let me mention this. He did say to Bonazera, he said, at some point in time, I may ask you for a service. Now, Bonazera was an undertaker. He said, I might ask you for a service. He said, hopefully that day will never happen, but one day maybe it will happen, and that's how you'll repay me, you know, for this kindness that I'm showing you. Now, we know in the movie that Bonazera did perform a service when Sonny got killed at the toll booth. He brought, uh, the Godfather brought Sonny's body to Bonazera to take care of, and, you know, in a terrible scene, he says, you know, look what they did to my son, those animals. He said, please take care of him. I don't want my, his mother to see him this way. It was a, it was a tough scene, but, uh, and that came later on. But what are the takeaways in this scene? The takeaways, again, you don't burn bridges. If you have a friend that at some point in time could be a benefit to you, you don't burn that bridge. And it's the same in business. You know, networking is so important. Making relationships is so important. Keeping relationships is so important. You don't want to burn bridges. Whenever you can leave off with somebody in a nice way, you know you can always go back to that person. 
You know, and maybe the first time you go back to him, it won't be something that you can accomplish with him. But maybe the second or third time you can. I have found networking to be so important in my life. You know, when somebody gives me a business card and I think it could be beneficial, I put it on the side and I kind of remember, hey, you know what? I met this guy in a certain place and maybe now's the time I can talk to him because I need something done. That's happened to me throughout my life. Networking is very important. So I think in this scene, it shows us that because Vito said, had you been just respectful to me, anything that you want, it would have been done on the spot because we had that relationship. So remember, in life, it's very important not to burn bridges. It's very important to keep relationships. It's very important to be respectful to someone, especially if someone's in a position at some point in time to help you in a certain way. It's very important, you know, again, you don't burn bridges, you give respect when it's due, and you always try to leave off with people in the right way. If you do that, you see your relationships at some point in time are gonna be very meaningful to you. So, you know, all of this that I talk about it, I talk about it in my negotiation guide, in my leadership workshops, we talk about this in my inner circle. These are ways that you can benefit in life. And you know, sometimes you learn a little thing, you know, that becomes so important at some point in time later on. Just imagine, networking with somebody, not burning a bridge, and you come to him maybe with a deal or something that you need later on, and because you didn't burn that bridge, because you networked the, properly at the time, look how it may benefit you. These things are so important. So even in a scene like this, you can learn something. You know, it's funny, when I watch a movie, I always try to see if I can get something out of it. There are many movies that I learn things from, and maybe this is something we can continue to do and we can share that information with you. So, hope you enjoyed it. Great scene. If you haven't seen The Godfather yet, you gotta, you gotta see it. Whatever you gotta do, man. It's all over the place. It's easy to find. You gotta watch the movie. Iconic, amazing. You'll love it, guaranteed. So, that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Again, these are trying times. Be safe. Watch your back. Look over your shoulder when you're walking down the street, especially in these liberal cities. Sorry about that, but those are the facts. Be healthy. I think most of us are coming out of this pandemic okay. For those of you that haven't, my heart goes out to those people that are left there. Sorry for that. But be safe. Be healthy. God bless you. We need God's blessings more than ever before. And yes, I will see you next time. Take care.